When a paralyzed boy went from playing with a stray, unloved dog to hugging it too tightly, the pup immediately started barking. His parents were quickly alerted, and when they saw what was happening, his dad immediately realized that something was seriously wrong. Eight-year-old Liam lay motionless on the lush green grass, his paralyzed limbs sprawled out as he clung tightly to the golden retriever beside him. A rare neurological disorder had ravaged his body, reducing the once active and energetic boy to a shell of his former self, paralyzing him from the neck down. Yet in this moment, Liam's face was alight with a joy and contentment that his parents, Lisa and Michael, had not seen in months. A stray dog was sitting next to him, its tail swishing happily from side to side. They had nicknamed him Buddy because of how much their son loved playing with him whenever he was around. Despite being a stray, he had become the boy's constant companion. This unloved street dog offered a source of comfort and companionship that no amount of medical intervention could provide. As Lisa and Michael watched from the porch, their hearts swelled with a mixture of hope and trepidation. They had been through so much with their son, and the sight of Liam's fragile body intertwined with the gentle dog was both heartwarming and heartbreaking. The wooden steps creaked under their feet as they leaned against the railing, hands clasped together in a gesture of shared strength. Look at them, Lisa murmured, her voice barely above a whisper. The lines around her eyes, etched by years of worry and sleepless nights, softened as she watched her son. Liam hasn't been that engaged with anything in weeks. It's as if the dog has brought him back to life. Michael nodded, his brow furrowed with a mixture of concern and wonder. The weight of the past few years showed in the slump of his shoulders in the premature gray at his temples. I know, but I can't help but worry. What if something happens? Liam's condition is fragile. We can't risk anything. Lisa reached out and squeezed her husband's hand, her eyes never leaving the scene unfolding before them. The sunlight glinted on the gold band on her finger, serving as a poignant reminder of their unwavering commitment to each other. I know, but for now, let's just be grateful that Liam has found this connection. Lord knows he's been through enough. The couple stood in silence, lost in their own thoughts. They remembered the countless doctor's appointments, the battery of tests, and the moment they received the devastating diagnosis. Each milestone in Liam's decline was etched into their memories. The first time he stumbled, the day he could no longer hold a pencil, and finally, the morning he woke up unable to move at all. Suddenly, Liam's body stiffened and the boy let out a soft whistle. His arms wrapped tightly around Buddy, who immediately began to whine and squirm, trying to free himself from Liam's grip. The peaceful scene shattered in an instant, replaced by a growing sense of unease. Lisa and Michael exchanged a worried glance, their hands instinctively tightening around each other. The familiar feeling of dread, never far from the surface, came rushing back. What's happening? Michael inquired, his voice laced with concern. As Buddy continued to struggle, he let out a series of short, sharp barks, his body trembling with what seemed to be a mixture of distress and urgency. Liam's eyes were wide and unfocused, his arms locked around the dog in what appeared to be an embrace. But there was something off about the way Liam held himself, a rigidity that hadn't been there moments before. He's hugging Buddy too tightly, Lisa said, her voice uncertain. She stepped forward, ready to intervene. Liam, sweetie, you need to let go. You're scaring him. But Liam didn't respond. His lips moved, forming silent words that his parents couldn't quite make out. The peaceful backyard now seemed eerily quiet, save for Buddy's increasingly frantic barks. The flowers, which had seemed so cheerful just moments ago, now stood as silent spectators to the unfolding drama. Suddenly, Buddy's barks grew louder and more frantic, and the dog began to pace back and forth as much as Liam's grip would allow, his gaze darting between the boy and the house. It seemed like the dog was communicating, his animal instinct sensing a danger humans hadn't noticed. Something's wrong, Michael exclaimed, already rushing towards the pair. His feet pounded against the grass, each step bringing him closer to his son. Lisa was close on his heels, her heart racing with fear and maternal instinct. As they reached Liam's side, they saw that his face was etched with a mixture of fear and confusion. Buddy continued to bark and whine, his eyes pleading with the parents to understand what was happening. The dog's distress was palpable, adding to the growing sense of panic. Liam, what is it? Lisa asked, her voice trembling as she searched her son's face for any sign of distress. She reached out to touch his cheek, noticing how clammy his skin felt under her fingers. We need to get him inside now, 
Michael shouted, gently scooping Liam's paralyzed body into his arms. The boy felt lighter than ever, a stark reminder of how much his condition had deteriorated. Michael cradled his son close, feeling the rapid beat of Liam's heart against his chest. Lisa followed close behind, her heart pounding with a mixture of fear and adrenaline. She cast a glance back at the spot where Liam had been lying, the flattened grass the only evidence of the peaceful moment they had shared just minutes ago. Buddy trailed after them, his barks and whines echoing through the quiet neighborhood. As they rushed Liam into the house and laid him on the couch, the boy's breathing became more labored, his eyes wide with panic. The living room, usually a place of comfort, now felt claustrophobic. Michael fumbled with his phone, his fingers shaking as he dialed 911. The operator's calm voice was a stark contrast to the panic that filled the room. As Michael relayed the situation, Lisa continued to monitor Liam, her maternal instincts kicking into overdrive. Within minutes, the sound of sirens filled the air, and a team of paramedics rushed into the house, their faces etched with concern. What happened? One of the EMTs asked, already beginning to assess Liam's condition. Lisa and Michael quickly explained the situation, their words tumbling out in a frantic rush. We don't know what's wrong, Michael said, his voice laced with desperation. Is this your dog? The paramedics asked. Lisa shook her head. He's a stray. Liam was hugging him tightly, as if his arms were locked. The EMTs exchanged a puzzled glance, their brows furrowed in concentration. All right, let's get him to the hospital, the lead paramedic said, gently lifting Liam onto a stretcher. As the family watched the ambulance speed away, Buddy let out a low, sorrowful howl, his eyes fixed on the retreating vehicle. The drive to the hospital was a blur of sirens and fearful silence. Lisa and Michael held each other's hands in the car, their knuckles white with the intensity of their grip. The familiar streets of their neighborhood gave way to the bustling city, but they hardly noticed the change in scenery. Their thoughts were focused solely on Liam, willing him to hold on until they reached the hospital. As they burst through the emergency room doors, the medical staff immediately sprang into action, whisking Liam away to a private exam room. The stark white walls and antiseptic smell of the hospital were all too familiar to the family, a grim reminder of the many times they had been here before. Lisa and Michael followed, their hearts pounding with a mixture of hope and dread. They watched as doctors and nurses swarmed around their son, their voices a cacophony of medical jargon that was both reassuring and terrifying. What's happening to him? Lisa pleaded, her voice barely above a whisper. She clutched Michael's arm, seeking support as they watched the medical team work. The lead doctor, a stern-faced woman with kind eyes, turned to address them. Her voice was calm and authoritative, a steady presence in the chaos of the emergency room. I'm afraid we're not entirely sure yet. Your son's vital signs are erratic, and we're detecting some concerning neurological activity. We need to run a series of tests to determine the cause. Michael squeezed Lisa's hand, his own face etched with worry. The lines around his eyes deepened as he frowned, trying to make sense of the situation. But he was fine a few minutes ago. What could have triggered this? The doctor's brow furrowed in contemplation. She had seen many cases in her career, but Liam's sudden decline was puzzling. That's what we're going to try to find out. For now, I need you both to stay here while we stabilize your son's condition. We'll come back as soon as we have more information. With a nod, the doctor turned and hurried back toward Liam's room, leaving the parents alone with their mounting fears. The bustling emergency room continued its frantic pace around them, but Lisa and Michael felt isolated in their bubble of worry. As they sat in the sterile waiting room, surrounded by other worried families, Lisa and Michael couldn't help but reflect on the journey that had brought them to this point. The past few years had been a roller coaster of hope and despair, small victories overshadowed by devastating setbacks. Liam had been diagnosed with a rare neurological disorder when he was just six years old, and the prognosis had never been good. As the years passed, the boy's mobility slowly diminished until he found himself confined to a wheelchair and then ultimately to his bed. The once vibrant and energetic child had been reduced to a shell of his former self, his world shrinking to the confines of his own home. Through it all, Lisa and Michael had remained steadfast, pouring their hearts and souls into caring for their son. They had tried every experimental treatment and every promising new drug, but nothing seemed to slow the relentless march of Liam's disease. The emotional toll had been just as devastating. Liam's once vibrant personality had been replaced by a listless and detached demeanor, 
and the boy's parents watched helplessly as their son's zest for life slowly faded away. It was during this bleak and hopeless period that a stray golden retriever began to frequent their neighborhood. The dog, scruffy and unkempt, would often wander near their house, catching Liam's attention from his bedroom window. Despite his condition, Liam found joy in watching the dog, and on days when he felt strong enough, he would ask his parents to take him outside to see the friendly stray up close. The dog, which Liam had affectionately named Buddy, seemed to sense the boy's fragility and always approached gently, his tail wagging with enthusiasm. He was unloved by many, but to Liam, he was a best friend. These brief encounters brought a spark of life back to the boy's eyes, and his parents marveled at the positive effect the dog had on their son's mood. As Lisa and Michael sat in the hospital waiting room, their thoughts drifted to Buddy. They remembered how just that morning they had seen the dog trotting down the street as they rushed Liam to the car. In their panic, they hadn't given the stray a second thought. Before Michael could respond to Lisa's earlier comment, the door to Liam's room burst open and the doctor hurried towards them, her face etched with a mixture of concern and confusion. We've stabilized your son's condition, but I'm afraid the news isn't good, she said, her voice grave. Lisa and Michael rose to their feet, their hearts pounding with dread. What is it? Michael inquired, his voice hoarse with emotion. The doctor took a deep breath before continuing. Liam appears to be experiencing a severe seizure. We've diagnosed this based on his symptoms and presentation, but at this point, I can't determine the underlying cause. Seizures can have various triggers and, given Liam's fragile condition, we'll need to run further tests to understand what's happening. Lisa felt her knees go weak and Michael quickly guided her to a nearby chair, his own face etched with concern. But how is that possible? Lisa asked, her voice trembling. The doctor's expression darkened. That's the concerning part. We're still trying to identify the trigger. Has there been any change in his routine or environment recently? Michael and Lisa looked at each other, their minds racing. No, nothing significant, Michael replied. The only new thing in his life has been a stray dog he's been playing with, but that's been going on for weeks without any issues. The doctor nodded, making a note on her clipboard. We'll take that into consideration, but it's unlikely to be the cause of such a severe reaction. We're going to run more tests to get to the bottom of this. As Lisa and Michael grappled with the doctor's words, a sudden commotion erupted from Liam's room. The sound of frantic beeping and the shouts of medical personnel filled the air, sending a chill down the parents' spines. Instinctively, they rushed towards the door, their hearts pounding with fear and desperation. As they entered the room, the scene was chaotic. Liam lay on the bed, his body convulsing as the medical team struggled to stabilize his rapidly deteriorating condition. Amidst the frenzy, a familiar golden form suddenly appeared at the foot of the bed, its eyes fixed on the boy with an intensity that seemed to transcend the mere animal. Somehow, Buddy had managed to follow them to the hospital and find his way to Liam's room. What's happening? Lisa cried, her voice barely audible above the din. The lead doctor turned towards them, her face a mask of concentration. His seizure has intensified. We're administering emergency medication to bring it under control. She noticed the dog and frowned. How did that animal get in here? We need to remove it immediately. But before anyone could act, the medication began to take effect. Liam's convulsion started to subside and his breathing steadied. His condition is stabilizing, the doctor announced, her voice filled with relief. The medication is working as intended. As Liam's vital signs returned to normal, Buddy remained at the foot of the bed, his tail wagging gently. The medical staff, initially alarmed by the dog's presence, now watched in amazement as Liam's hand reached out weakly toward the animal. I don't believe it, the doctor murmured, shaking her head. The seizure has passed and his vitals are improving rapidly. It seems the medication was more effective than we anticipated. Or perhaps the dog... She trailed off. Did you say that the dog started barking before you noticed the symptoms of the seizure? Yes, Michael replied. Liam was hugging the dog. We thought Buddy was barking because he was holding on too tight. Perhaps he was alerting you that something wasn't right. Dogs have a way of anticipating episodes like the one Liam suffered. It's a good thing they were together, the doctor concluded. Lisa and Michael stared at the scene before them, their eyes brimming with tears of relief. They had been prepared for the worst, and yet there was their son showing signs of recovery thanks to their swift intervention, and they owed it all to a stray dog. As the days passed, Liam's condition continued to improve. 
The medical team ran extensive tests to determine the cause of his seizure, eventually concluding that it had been triggered by a rare interaction between two of his medications. They adjusted his treatment plan accordingly and Liam's health began to stabilize. After two weeks of treatment and observation, Liam was finally deemed well enough to be discharged. As the family prepared to leave the hospital, they found Buddy waiting patiently outside as if he knew they were coming. Lisa and Michael exchanged a look, a silent understanding passing between them. They had witnessed the positive impact Buddy had on their son and they couldn't bear the thought of separating them now. Liam, Michael said, kneeling down beside his son's wheelchair. How would you feel if Buddy came home with us? Liam's face lit up with a joy they hadn't seen in years. Really? Can we keep him? Lisa smiled, her heart full of emotion. Yes, sweetheart. We think it's time Buddy had a real home, don't you? And so, as they left the hospital, they left not as a family of three, but as a family of four. Buddy trotted alongside Liam's wheelchair, his tail wagging with excitement for the new life that awaited him. The journey ahead would not be easy. Liam's condition, while improved, was still serious and there would be many challenges to face. But with Buddy by their side, the family felt a renewed sense of hope and strength. They had weathered this storm together and they were ready to face whatever the future might bring, united by the unexpected bond formed between a boy and a once unloved stray dog. As they drove home, Lisa and Michael couldn't help but marvel at the twists of fate that had brought them to this moment. They had gone to the hospital fearing the worst, and yet they were returning home with not just their son, but with a new family member who had, in his own way, helped bring Liam back to them. And as Buddy settled into his new home, curling up protectively by Liam's side, they knew that whatever challenges lay ahead, they would face them together, as a family. Have you ever experienced a moment of unexpected joy or a small act of compassion that left a profound mark on your life? Share your personal experiences with us in the comments below. Your stories of resilience and the transformative power of unwavering companionship can inspire us all. Join us for more exciting stories like this one.